Welcome to Indian Oil's four-part video series on industrial security, an initiative to further streamline security measures at our various operating units across the country, from refineries to pipelines installations, from bulk storage terminals and depots to LPG plants, from aviation fuel stations to lube blending plants, etc. At Indian Oil, we are committed to providing the highest standards of security at our installations for all our employees and the nation at large. At Indian Oil, the philosophy of our security department is that it is always better to prevent and prepare than repent and repair. Further to that, uh, we also follow a second philosophy as, as a security personnel that respect all, suspect all and inspect all. And at Indian Oil, security works because all of us work together. That is why we are secure. Security of an installation calls for security at multiple levels. Perimeter security to deter intruders. Access control to delay and regulate entry. Vehicle security to detect possible threats from explosives. Physical security to develop a total defense mechanism. Perimeter security. Let us now begin with an overview of the first layer of security. Perimeter security. Right from ancient times, perimeter security has been the first line of defense against possible entry of unauthorized persons by force, stealth or accident. Designed with the prime purpose of keeping intruders out or captives contained within an area, both natural and man-made barriers were used to secure the perimeter from stone walls and water-filled moats around fortresses to protect barriers of thorny hedges or sharp-edged wooden or bamboo spikes around the castles and houses. Perimeter security took on many forms. Let us now look at perimeter security in the context of Indian oil installations. Perimeter security creates a physical and psychological deterrent to unauthorized entry, prevents unlawful entry or trespass, directs flow of people, goods and vehicular traffic, enables effective and economic use of security guards. The perimeter wall should be of thick brick or stone masonry, reinforced in the lower four feet in high threat areas to withstand bold attack or ramming by vehicles. The height may vary from 8 to 10 feet depending on the threat perception. In addition, there should be a 2 foot high barbed wire fencing on the perimeter wall with concertina coil on the top. Gates The thumb rule of security. Keep the gates to the bare minimum as intruders can exploit them for nefarious activities. More gates means deployment of additional security personnel which adds to the expenditure. The gates should be strong, sturdy and of the same height as that of the adjoining perimeter wall. Anti scaling and anti burrowing devices should be fixed on the top and bottom of the gates. There should be separate gates for men and material. Where human traffic is substantial, wicket gates with lane system should be provided by the side of the main gate to regulate entry and exit of personnel. Wherever possible, provide a separate gate for casual labor in case they are too many, for instance, for construction work within the installation. To mitigate false or proxy entry, biometric or proximity cards with turnstile gates can also be used. Physical search of employees at the gate should be random and unbiased while that of visitors and laborers should be regular and thorough. Handheld metal detectors or HHMDs, door frame metal detectors or DFMDs and explosive detectors should be used at the gate 
for anti-sabotage checks. Adequate lighting should be provided at all the gates with backup arrangements to identify men and material passing through the gate. CCTV cameras with recording facility should cover the gates to keep an eye on erring employees or security personnel and also to help identify intruders if any. There should be trolley mounted mirrors for thorough anti-sabotage checks of incoming vehicles. It should be ensured that spark arresters and portable fire extinguishers fitted into every incoming vehicle to meet fire safety regulations. Hydraulic or manual drop gates and speed breakers should be installed at the gates to prevent gate crashing by speeding vehicles. Elevated platforms to be erected at the material or railway gate to check the upper portion of the truck or inside the tank wagon. Proper illumination around the perimeter wall at night would enable security guards to perform their tasks properly and detect possible intrusions. Light points focusing towards the perimeter should be fixed in such a way that there is clear visibility at intervals of about 30 to 50 meters along the perimeter and at all the corners. Dark spots should be avoided along the perimeter. Electric poles should be erected at a safe distance from the perimeter so that these are not used as climbing devices from outside. Power cables should be laid underground. All switches may also be fully secured. Perimeter lighting must have standby power backup in case of power failure. The area along the perimeter up to a distance of 25 meters should be kept clear of plantations or other structures and no construction should be allowed on either side. In case of smaller installations, this distance can be brought down proportionally. Removal of wild overgrowth and thick vegetation along the perimeter should be a routine exercise. Tree branches overhanging the perimeter should be pruned periodically as they could be used as scaling devices by intruders. Similarly, trunks of trees, electric poles, etc. close to the perimeter should be removed or should be wrapped with barbed wire or other anti-climbing devices. Regular patrolling and CCTV surveillance systems along the perimeter will help deter intrusions. In the case of water inlets or drainage systems that lie along the perimeter, iron grills or wire mesh have to be installed at all openings like water channels, sewer ducts, tunnels, culverts, etc. All openings having an area of 96 square inches or more have to be secured. Openings in the wall, even if covered with grills, should be kept under regular surveillance as these could be exploited by vested interests to gain entry. Due to heavy rain or floods, drainage system or openings along the perimeter may get blocked and inundate the neighboring area and damage the perimeter wall. Proper surveillance of all such points along the perimeter will ensure uninterrupted flow of rain or flood water. The patrolling track could be a motorable one or a cycle or foot patrolling track. In case space is available, the patrolling track could be laid on either side of the perimeter wall or in close proximity to the wall inside. Criss-cross patrolling should be carried out by the security personnel, preferably from dusk to dawn. If the area is large, 
random patrolling may also have to be conducted during daytime. During patrolling, deficiencies noted along the perimeter wall such as breakages, improper focusing of lights and any telltale marks along the perimeter should be noted and brought to the notice of security in charge and the management for immediate remedial action. Watch towers or bastions should be provided at strategic locations along the perimeter wall to facilitate proper vigil over large areas adjacent to the perimeter. The watch towers should be designed to provide enough space to the security guard to move around freely for getting a full view of the surroundings and a clear field of fire. The height of the tower should be adequate, that is, 15 to 20 feet keeping in view the terrain and the height of the perimeter wall. The walls of the cabin should be of shoulder height so that the movement of the sentry is not seen from outside. Light points inside the cabin should be used only on need basis so as to avoid exposing the sentry. The staircase of the watch towers should not be too steep making it inconvenient for the security personnel to use the same. Rotating floodlights and dependable means of communication should be provided at the towers so that the sentry could focus the light on suspicious objects or movement, if any, and also communicate the same to the security control room. The watch towers should be manned round the clock. The duties of the sentry at the watch tower should be rotated every two to three hours so that the sentry always remains alert. If possible, the guard room must be located in close proximity to the watch tower so that the security personnel are available to meet any emergency. The perimeter should have CCTV cameras all along so as to cover the entire area without any blind spots. Intrusion detection is the detection of a person or vehicle attempting to gain unauthorized entry into a protected area by surface, air, underwater or underground. An effective perimeter intrusion detection system or PIDS comprises exterior intrusion sensors video alarms, an entry control and alarm system all working together. The perimeter sensors can also be integrated with computerized CCTV systems with recording facility. Pan tilt CCTV cameras automatically focus on the place of intrusion and flash an alarm to the control room which in turn alerts the security. The recording also helps in identifying the intruder and thus aids in the investigation. To conclude, a suitable perimeter wall together with an effective surveillance system is vital for the security of sensitive installations. So, perimeter security should always receive due attention at the planning or design stage of the installation considering the vulnerability of the installation and not come as an afterthought and should be augmented by modern surveillance gadgets. Now, some thought bites to ensure effective perimeter security at installations. What materials and specifications need to be met for walls? What is the role of gates and barriers? What is effective perimeter illumination? Wow! Is water drainage also part of security? How effective is my CCTV surveillance system and perimeter intrusion detection system PIDS?